Okay, this is Bill Palm uh, taping again in the Pacific Northwest where it's raining almost continuously right here at the beginning of spring and end of winter. So I'm doing this indoors for sure. Um, I want to talk about two vital principles of composition, the two most important ones in planning and putting together your paintings and my paintings for that matter. I'll talk about one today and, uh, and the other one uh, later on. This clip, maybe one clip or two, it depends upon how long it goes. First, um, I will talk about the second in overall importance. Next time I'll talk about the first. The first is getting good shapes and some dominance in all of the elements of your painting. That is, some parts of your painting will be made to look and be more important than the other ones by size or emphasis or whatever. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to be talking about flow in your paintings. Now, look at the scene here. This is a scene uh, near my house. I went on a hike with my grandchildren recently and, and uh, from that hike I took four scenes and sketched them. And this is one of them right here. It's, it's just a simple scene with some background mountains and fields of uh, farmland and a barn. Now we go down a little bit and we're going to look at the sketch. And I'll back up so you can see it in its entirety. There we are. Notice I did a simple sketch of it, and it was in pencil, but I changed that because I wanted it to be easily read, so I darkened it with a Sharpie black. Just went in and went over all the lines. Notice something about this, and that is this, that all of these areas here are self-contained, isolated, like a mosaic. Here's a piece here. Here's a piece here. See, the lines go all the way around like a uh, wall or a fence all the way around the area. Here's another one. Here's here's a little one in a, in a distant barn. Here's uh, another piece of field that goes all the way across. Notice how it's, it has a line all the way around its perimeter. The barn's the same. Here's uh, the top section of the roof is all in, enclosed. This section of the roof is enclosed. This side, this side is enclosed. And by the way, I notice I forgot to do one there. So you have all these little things like a, like a mosaic. Now a mosaic's fine with a stained glass window because people, when they look in a stained glass, they know that they're, they have all these little contained areas of different colored glass and so forth. And they expect that. But in a painting, they expect more. Remember that. They always expect more in a painting, especially a painting that's supposed to look somewhat real or somewhat representational. Okay? If this sketch here were a pool of water, flat, laying flat, and all these dark, these black lines were walls. You could see that the water could have a lot of trouble flowing between each area or filling each area up if the, if the walls were high enough. See, they're all contained. There isn't enough flow to it. Now, let's take this and go to another page. Now this is going to be the same exact drawing. I just duplicated it several times in order to save time. Okay. Now, we're going to move over here a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Move up. A little higher. We'll get the light over there and zoom in a bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to provide for a thing called <clears throat> Lost and Found Ages. As soon as I get this camera aimed right. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I've gone through when I was planning this and decided where I wanted to lose my edges. I'm getting a pencil with a nice strong eraser on it. Now I'm going to come in here and where I want more flow I'm going to erase some of the pencil lines that I drew before like here and here and here so that the sky can now flow quote unquote in essence down from the sky and into the mountain, um, from the mountain up back into the sky and, and around like that. I've, I've 
provided a little more freedom in this thing so that things can flow. And when I talk about flow and erasing the lines, what I mean by that is that you get an edge whenever there's a difference in value, especially if, if it's a hard edge, if you uh, paint it or draw it like a hard edge, like a line. Like this could be light and this could be a little bit darker. See? So when I talk about erasing the lines, this is preliminary work in, in painting planning before I start painting and before I start doing a value study, which I will do down here at the bottom. I'm, when I'm erasing the lines, what I'm doing is I'm equalizing the values between the areas. If this is light and this is medium, then I make this medium light where I erase the line so that there's a feeling of flow uh, from one area to another. And I do that all through here. I'm going to do this here. I'm going to erase this and here and here and here and the top of the barn here and the top of this barn and the bottom of that barn, making them flow. And this right here so that this little field area or whatever it is, yeah, field area can move up into this one and here and here and this side of the barn and this side of the barn so that this dark edge of the barn can flow into these tree, this tree area right here. And maybe we'll have a little bit erased out here on this side of the barn and that way like that. Okay, now to emphasize that so it's easy for you to see that, <clears throat> I'm going to go in and redraw my lines. Only this time I'm going to leave the erased portions erased so you can see where they are. So they become a lot more obvious and easier to see. I'm going to check my camera now, make sure you can see, yes, you can see what I'm doing. Okay, here's the top of this remote barn, only I left a space there. And I left a space at the bottom of that roof that's just above the edge of those weeds or field or whatever it is. Over here I'm leaving that open right there. As I do the top of the roof of this nearby barn, which is really our center of interest, I'm leaving some spaces. I could leave one right there too, by the way in the edge of that one there, coming up here, maybe like that. Okay, now this edge is going to blend a little bit into these trees right about here, so I need to erase that line. So this, in essence, this becomes a plan for painting, especially if I do the value study portion next, which makes it look almost like a painting. Now you can see this fl can flow through here. And when we do this line here, see, I'm not going to do it all the way across so that this could flow here. We have an edge to the barn a little bit there. And we have some here and we have some here. And I'm going around like this, like that. This comes down here, but it flows out that way. And we have it like that. So here's our drawing. Finished. Pretty much. But you notice <clears throat> that what happened was I lost a lot of those edges that I had before. Well, you can see it there. There's a this at lost I, they disappeared. Segments of the edge disappeared all the way along here. And what that means is I'm going to paint it in a way that I'm going to blend the edges here from one value area to a slightly different value area so that they flow together, they merge in the eyes of the viewer and in fact they merge in fact on the paper as I paint. So the next clip what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up here I'm going to duplicate my work here down here so that I have something that keeps me from messing up when I do the bottom one. I'm going to go down here and do it again only this time I'm going to do a value study and show you how I would do a real thorough preparation for painting by doing that value study. So uh, this is part one, part two.